Oh my god! Glasses Matt is back! Oh yeah, that's right, they're back. The reason for which is actually really sad. You see, the reason I wasn't wearing them is because I lost them. Where were they? Well, they were sitting on my kitchen table. So Glasses Matt is, yes, back. And back today to deliver you some fantastic AI news. I think I said this quite recently, for some reason this time of the year, give or take, is like the biggest time for AI development. Lots of things being released, lots of announcements, lots of rumors floating around. So let's go ahead and dive headfirst into the latest and greatest. Alright, this is the first thing that I want to talk about today is the GPT 4.5 leaks. If you watched my last AI news video, I talked about a GPT 4.5 leak that came from Reddit. I'm not going to get into too much detail, but the leak looked legit enough to get people talking about it and speculating. Later, Sam Altman kind of quote-unquote confirmed, as you can see by this tweet right here, that the leak is... Nah, not legit. However, Sam Altman in my book is kind of a troll, so I feel like he would just lie to us anyways. Just a few days after this supposed leak and deconfirmation from Sam Altman, the CEO, this started happening. ChatGPT has been referring to itself as GPT 4.5 Turbo, which is super weird, and this was floating around Twitter quite a lot and on my Discord server as well. Everyone was talking about it. Some people even claiming that it's different between the online GPT and the Android app GPT. Where on Android it would claim that it's GPT 4.0 Turbo and online it would claim that it's GPT 4.5 Turbo. Leading a lot of people to believe that they're just using different models. That GPT 4.5 is already running in the background as like this secret blind test and no one is noticing. And not only this but even more AI hype was propagated by Steven Heidel who works for OpenAI tweeting, brace yourselves, AGI is coming, like GPT-5 or GPT-4.5 is just about to release with crazy capabilities. So by and large, a lot of hype is going around. So testing this out for ourselves, currently I'm unable to replicate this GPT-4.5 turbo glitch. Not to say that people are necessarily lying about it, I think that this issue has just been ironed out by the devs. So all of these rumors circulating about GPT-4.5 doesn't mean that GPT 4.5 is knocking on our door and coming soon. Here's my take on things. Obviously, OpenAI is developing more powerful large language models. I think we can expect to see either a GPT 4.5 or a GPT 5 next year. They have to compete with the rest of the market and especially open source, which we will get into in today's video because there's some bold claims made by open source devs. I think the reason that it might have been calling itself GPT 4.5 is because because the background prompt for ChatGPT might have just been changed accidentally to say GPT 4.5. After all, the background prompt that ChatGPT uses does in fact include the name GPT 4, or in the case of the free version of ChatGPT, GPT 3.5. I think it's very likely that an OpenAI dev might have just accidentally changed the name to GPT 4.5 in that background prompt. And it updated for everyone and they have since fixed it. Either way, there does seem to be a lot of hype stirring around about GPT 4.5 or even a GPT 5. I'd love to hear your thoughts and speculations in the comments below. So speaking of powerful large language models, there are some open source devs and open source models making some pretty huge claims. Let's jump right into those. Open Chat introduces the quote-unquote world's best open source 7B-sized large language model, Open Chat 3.5. They claim that this model, this open source model, surpasses both the free version of ChatGPT and Grok. Very, very impressive and bold claims to say world's best. It's also pretty cool to see that this model is 7 billion parameters, which is absolutely smaller than the free version of ChatGPT. It also means that it should be able to run locally very quickly on a lot of machines. So this update is focused mostly on coding performance, which is increasingly more and more important for large language models and seems to make them better in a lot of areas. We can see over here on the left hand side, ChatGPT is the red bubble right here and OpenChat is the blue bubble. In all of these different benchmarks, for the most part, OpenChat is actually either on par or just slightly better than that 
free ChatGPT 3.5. However, on MMLU and BBHCOT, it gets beaten pretty handily. But in Human Eval, hey, that's a really strong lead. And over here on the right-hand side, we can see this thing pretty much just smashes Grok. No surprise there, really. Grok's not known for being the most powerful large language model in the world, but both the, the Grok models get beat pretty handily, except for the MMLU benchmark. I've been told by you viewers at home that MMLU is a little bit outdated. It isn't really a great benchmark anyways, but each benchmark has its own strengths and weaknesses, right? Either way, man, it is mighty impressive, especially catching up to ChatGPT as a small 7B sized open source model. What's really awesome about this thing is that it's fully open source, so of course it is available on the openchat.team website for entirely free. You can actually change the temperature as well, which is a setting you don't normally get with ChatGPT. We get system prompts and you can even save and collect prompts on the right hand side. Dang, I gotta say the generation by this model is quite fast, especially for being entirely free. And man, these small sized models are getting really, really good. Of course, guys, I'll also link down below the GitHub page itself if you want to download and run this thing on your own machine. Really awesome to see good open source models becoming readily available. In other open source news, the CEO of Mistral AI, which has been a massive player in the open source large language model game, made a pretty big statement. Mistral will release an open source GPT-4 level model in 2024. Guys, this is absolutely massive. If we take another peek at those open chat benchmarks, you can see Mistral AI is right down here with another 7B model and very competitive scores. This was a few months ago now that this model was released, and you can see there's a lot of models that are actually built upon Mistral's architecture because it is so good. Mistral has been a serious competitor in the open source large language model space, and the fact that they're saying they're going to have a serious competitor to GPT-4, but open source by 2024 is insane. This essentially means that OpenAI has to release a GPT-5 that is leagues above GPT-4 inside of 2024. That gap between open source and closed source large language models is closing quickly, and it looks like it might close by 2024. In my opinion, this is a great thing. Open source models like Mistral AI, for example, or OpenChat are completely free for people to download and run on their own machines privately at home. And it's great for developers to build cheap and affordable and accessible AI products for the masses. We don't want people with wealth being the only ones who have access to good AI. We want everybody to have access to good AI. And the way that's possible is through open source development. Not to say that there are no downsides to open source, because I understand there are some major safety concerns that go along with it. But I'm not the first person to say that. I think the cat's already out of the bag. And we will unfortunately see some pretty horrible things happen because of artificial intelligence becoming more accessible. But I happen to be on the side of thinking that there will be more good that comes from this than bad. But enough about my personal beliefs, let's check out our next piece of AI news. So this comes to us from Linus Ekenstam on Twitter, a fantastic AI news account. This is huge. We're now starting to see AI-first hardware actually being developed. If you aren't familiar, guys, typically AI right now runs on GPUs or graphic processing units. They're not designed to work for AI, but they are still the best technology for it that we have right now. But this all changes right now, and you best believe that companies like NVIDIA are working on AI-first chips as well. As Linus points out, by burning, quote-unquote, the transformer architecture into their chips, Etched is creating the world's most powerful servers for just transformer inference, so it only does one thing really well. But you can see how much better it is by this level little graph right here. A100s are very good GPUs and it's just a sliver compared to what this 8x Sohu server is capable of. I mean, it is leagues and leagues faster. The software that runs it is also fully open source, which is cool to see. And not only will this allow us to run transformer models a lot faster, it'll make them cheaper to run as well, and even allow us to run much more powerful ones at the same speed that we run models today. New hardware like this is absolutely 
absolutely going to blast off what AI can do and this is the kind of technology that is going to make a lot of those science fiction ideas that we have with current AI tech very possible. So great work to etched AI and Nvidia I think you got some catching up to do. So this was entirely unexpected but Microsoft has actually teamed up with Suno AI meaning Bing Chat or Microsoft Copilot can now actually generate music using Suno AI with just a prompt. All for entirely free. Really cool. I have covered Suno AI pretty extensively on this channel in the past. I'm actually going to do an update video pretty soon. So get subscribed if you want to see that. But yeah, essentially Suno AI allows you to generate an entire song with lyrics and instrumentals all at once. It's very incredible and it is super impressive. I was not expecting this collaboration, but I'm pleasantly surprised because it means that more people can experience Suno AI for entirely free. This does come in the form of a Microsoft Copilot plug. In. Now, I don't think this is accessible to all users just yet. As you can see on my Bing Chat or Microsoft Copilot, I don't seem to have it as a plugin, but I assume they're slowly expanding access. Speaking of AI music, Stable Audio, yes, this is the same company that made Stable Diffusion, has released a new model, but only to their pro users at the moment. It's just being tested. Now, I don't think this really holds a candle to what Suno AI is able to do yet, but I do like to see some competition and some push in these markets and it is getting much more impressive you can also see that for this new beta model the outputs are only 45 seconds or so but much longer outputs are coming soon which would be great to see because suno ai right now is only limited to about a minute of generation granted you can continue your generations with suno ai but it's not perfect let's go ahead and take a quick listen to this new beta model Now, like I said, guys, I don't think it's as good as Suno AI yet, but they are evolving rapidly. And it doesn't mean that in 2024, they couldn't be better than Suno AI or right up on their tail. So we also have to talk about this new AI that is absolutely blowing up right now called Domo AI. It allows you to change the artistic style of pretty much any video. Right now, we're going to take a look at 10 examples that's brought to us by Proper Prompter here on Twitter. It's pretty incredible the style changes that this thing is able to do i mean they're like borderline usable for real artistic works in my opinion like we've seen style transfer before but not at this level not this good all right so our first example is going to be the anime style of course ever popular but man it is really consistent across the face as you can see and she spins around and the hair flows in a realistic way very consistent background i mean it's not like this perfect anime style sure but it is very much usable and quite pleasant to look at of course here is the original video by the way guys yeah so we just took a real video of a person and essentially converted it into a realistic animation in an anime style hard to believe this one might deserve a full video of its own so please let me know in the comments if you'd like me to take a closer look at this one so we've got another dancing video this time that is converted again to the anime style i think this one looks a little bit more like anime but you can see her glasses are sort of fading in and out yeah there's some more examples 
examples in that same anime style if you want to take a look at the thread. I want to move on to this style though, which really caught my eye. This is the pixel art style, and this is shockingly good. Typically for AI art generators, pixel art is very difficult to replicate. So we've got this little character on the side doing a dance here, and then it's actually replicated in some fairly realistic looking pixel art. I mean, it morphs a little bit. It's not perfect pixel art, but it's really darn good. I mean, I honestly think if you didn't know what you were looking for, this would be mighty convincing. There's definitely some artifacting going on. Like, it's not perfect pixel art. There's some weird smoothing, but as far as AI generated pixel art goes, this is among the most impressive I have ever seen. It seems like the styles have a lot of different ways that they can operate as well. Like, clearly this is the anime style again, but it looks a lot different than the other anime styles that we looked at, so perhaps there's some additional prompting that can go on to really shape things the way you want. Truthfully, the creative possibilities with this are endless. No debate about that. But yeah, I recommend you guys go check out this thread if you want to see the rest of the examples, but it's pretty incredible and pretty mind-blowing what this video to video can do. This is the best video to video I've ever seen. Let me know if you want me to check it out a little bit further. Oh, and one last thing, guys. You might have seen from my last AI news video that Midjourney V6 seems to be coming out pretty soon. Hopefully this week, actually. I want to know if you guys would like to see a AI image roundup towards the end of the year where I talk about and compare the biggest... AI image generators that are out there, so that would be Dolly 3, Midjourney, Google's Imagen, Meta's new Imagine AI, and probably a lot more. I'd make a big list and kind of run through them all in a video talking about the strengths and weaknesses of all of them. Let me know if that's something you'd be interested in. Thank you so much for watching, guys. Stay tuned for some more amazing AI videos. We've got a lot to talk about. See you guys in the next one. Goodbye.